think it's time. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vincent. That's better. Hi, I'm Vincent, and I'm a product design engineer. This is a $600 top of the line blender, widely regarded as one of the best in the world. And this is a $25 blender I got at Walmart. I'm gonna be testing them out, not only to see if one of them is better than the other, but also to break down why they're designed the way they are. This is tried and tested blenders. First, the smoothie test. I got some orange juice, frozen mangoes, spinach, and a banana. Since the frozen mangoes are so hard, they're really gonna test each blender's power. And spinach is fibrous and hard to liquefy, it's really gonna test how thorough these blenders are. All right, I'm gonna add these in. For the Oster, the smoothie button here is going to run it at a consistent speed, but I'm gonna have to manually turn it off. On the other hand, the Vitamix actually has a smoothie mode. The smoothie mode starts slow and then gets progressively faster. All right, let's get to it. So for both smoothies, the ingredients at the top of the container weren't getting combined. The Vitamix comes with this accessory called the tamp that allows me to push ingredients into the blades. The tamp is a really well-designed accessory that comes with the Vitamix that fits perfectly inside the blender without making contact with the blades. The Oster didn't come with anything, so I had to use a spatula to do the same thing. I had to be really careful because there was nothing preventing me from touching the blades with it. We got smoothies. They both look like they blended really well as far as breaking down the ingredients. The Vitamix is definitely just a little bit more smooth and has a silky texture. The Oster is smooth, but it's definitely thinner and doesn't hold its shape. It's definitely more liquidy. I think that these results all come down to the speed of the blades. The Vitamix smoothie setting starts at a low speed, ramps up to about a medium speed, and then ends at a really fast speed. This process helps break up the mango and then gradually smooth it into a liquidy consistency. By the end, everything had been so finely chopped that it liquefied. The blades in the Vitamix produce something called cavitation. Cavitation is a fluid dynamic mechanism that creates bubbles that quickly collapse. These collapsing bubbles create shock waves that help break down the ingredients. The thickness and the texture is coming from just being broken down to that level. The Oster motor just isn't as powerful as the Vitamix. While it still breaks everything down, it just doesn't go fast enough to take advantage of the cavitation process. Before we started today, I used a tachometer to measure the RPMs of each of these blenders. This showed me that the Vitamix blades move almost twice as fast as the Oster. So while these results aren't that far off, you can really see how power plays a role here. Pouring them out into a plate, you can clearly see that the Vitamix holds its form a lot better than the Oster result. But is this worth $600 more? That's kind of up to you to decide. If you're someone who's making smoothies every day, I think the Vitamix is definitely worth it. Overall, both these blenders make good smoothies, but the Vitamix really takes it to the next level. Next, I'm gonna be crushing some ice. The ability to crush ice is one of the most common blender features, but not all blenders crush ice equally. Typically the ideal outcome for this test is to create a snow-like consistency. Crushed ice is often used in frozen drinks and having a snow-like consistency is ideal for that. The Vitamix blender has an ice crush setting that automatically takes you through different speeds to achieve the best result. The Oster has an ice crush setting that is pulse based that you have to push yourself. All right, let's start with the Oster. So as you can see, the ice isn't going down into the blades. So while there is some ice getting crushed at the base, none of it at the top is getting crushed at all. I'm gonna have to use the spatula to try to get the ice into the blades. It's not ideal because the spatula couldn't really push the hard ice into the blades. At this point, I'd probably quit. Now onto the Vitamix. Immediately once the Vitamix started, it crushed the ice and turned it into snow. About midway through, I noticed that most of that snow was on the walls of the container and it pretty much stopped working. So at that point, I had to use the tamp to try to get more ice into the blades. Let's take a closer look at the results. There were just a few ice cubes left in the Vitamix, but overall, this is what I was hoping for. As you can see, the Vitamix crushed the ice to a snow-like consistency where the granules are pretty small. The Oster, on the other hand, didn't really do too much damage to the ice. Most of the pieces are whole, um, and then just a little bit of areas that were crushed, but nothing like a snow-like consistency. Both these blenders have the power to crush ice, but here we see how important the vessel design is. The Vitamix has a square profile at the base that has a lot of open area for ice to fall into. That allows the ice to consistently fall into the space where it meets the blades. With the blades constantly coming into contact, it pulverizes the ice. The Oster, on the other hand, has a very narrow base that doesn't allow ice to fall into the space where it can meet the blades. 
Because of this, only a very small amount of ice gets crushed, and then all the other ice just sits on the top. No matter how powerful the Oster is, the vessel design doesn't allow it to reach its maximum potential. This isn't necessarily about RPM. If the Vitamix vessel design was closer to the Oster, it would also have the same problem. Overall, the Vitamix crushed ice perfectly, while the Oster, I'm not sure if I would ever use that setting again. Next, I'm gonna be emulsifying some mayo. This test is different because it's not all about power. For this test, we want the blades to go slower. Mayo ingredients are pretty simple. We have olive oil, egg, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and Dijon mustard. I'm gonna be blending them at a low speed because I don't wanna overbeat the egg. Also, if the blender goes too fast, it can heat up and potentially cook the egg, which isn't great for mayo. What I'm ultimately hoping for here is a rich, creamy, thick result. The Vitamix doesn't have a mayo setting, so I'm just going to be setting it to power level one. For the Oster, I'm gonna choose the lowest setting, which is stir. Okay, let's mix some mayo. First, I'm gonna put in everything but the oil and mix those together. For both blenders, at the start, the initial ingredients seem to be combining well. The narrow base of the Oster seemed to keep all the ingredients tight together, while the wider base of the Vitamix caused things to splatter around a lot more. Once I add the oil in, the emulsification process starts, combining all the ingredients into one homogenous mixture. Looks like mayo, guys. The Oster produced a thick and creamy result, and it's everything I think a mayo should be. It's fluffy, soft, and reminds me of fancy mayo that you would get at a restaurant. The Vitamix result is more liquidy and a little bit runny. It'll still work as mayo, but it's not as nice. I think the results were mainly driven by the shape of the container. The Oster container's narrow base allowed for the emulsification to happen in a tighter space. Remember, these are ingredients that don't naturally want to combine. By forcing them into a tight area, it allowed for more consistent emulsification. With the Vitamix, even in the initial process, you can see that a lot of the ingredients were thrown away from the blades. Because of this, less of the ingredients were at the base and in contact with the oil as it was being poured in. This made it a little bit more difficult for them to be combined as thoroughly. Because of this problem with the width, even if I ran the Vitamix at a higher speed, I don't think I would have gotten a different result. Just to give the Vitamix another shot, let's do it again, but this time double the recipe. Doubling the ingredients on the Vitamix produced a better result. However, the Oster is still thicker and holds together way better. This confirms my thought that it all comes down to the base. The Vitamix is just too wide to give us the thickness that I'd be looking for in a perfect mayo. This is the first test where I actually think the Oster did a better job than the Vitamix. If you're gonna be making a lot of mayo, I'd probably go with this one. The Vitamix does have a narrow container option that you can buy as an accessory. But when you're already spending $600 on this, it's rough having to shell out more money. Overall, if you're gonna be making a lot of mayo, make sure you get a blender with a narrow base. Finally, I'm gonna be making some nut butter. Nut butter is thick and dense, so this test is all about power. I'm gonna be using almonds today. The blenders will need to break down the nuts, turning them into an almond flour, and then have to continue to work through that flour to turn them into a creamy butter. The force and torque required here is extreme, and a lot of lower end blenders can't handle it. Ultimately, I'm looking for a nut butter that is rich and creamy and doesn't have a lot of chunks. On this test, I'm gonna be using the highest power setting for each blender. On the Vitamix, that's power level 10, and on the Oster, it's gonna be the smoothie setting. All right, let's get to it. First, the Oster. I think it's time. <laughs> oh, there it is, look at that. There. I don't think it's on fire. Yeah, that's probably smart, just in case. So I didn't expect this to happen because these motors usually have a safety shut off, so if they get too hot, they should just stop. Obviously, this one is smoking. Um, that safety, I'm sure, is still there. Um, so maybe it's not getting too hot, but it's definitely concerning. And if I was at home, I, I'd be a little worried. I'm gonna let this cool down. Let's move on to the Vitamix. On the Vitamix, the almonds quickly broke apart, then turned into a flour, and eventually turned into a smooth texture. As expected, a lot of the crushed almonds were staying on the top of the mixture, so I used a tamp to push it down into the blades. The tamp is really well designed so that as I push it into the blender, it's not going to hit the blades. For the Oster, the nuts were crushed at the bottom, but whole nuts were stuck at the top of the container. It didn't come with a tamp, so I had to borrow the Vitamixes. Otherwise, I don't think any nut butter would have been made. Once I started using the tamp, I was able to see some progress. But since the tamp isn't designed for this Oster, I had to be really careful not to hit the blades. Ultimately, as the nut butter got thicker, it put more strain on the motor, causing it to smoke up. This is not ideal. For a test like this that really pushes the motor, the interface design is really important. On the Oster, we have a sprocket geometry on the blender base, but a square peg on the blender body. 
When a square peg goes into a sprocket geometry like this, it creates a chance for slippage and that could damage the components. The Vitamix has a multi-tooth gear that has a perfectly mating receptacle, which ensures a tight fit and no chance of slippage. Even at high speeds and forces, this is always going to be secure. All right, let's check out these nut butters. <laughs> As you can see, the Vitamix created a pretty smooth consistency. I could have added a little oil to get it a little creamier, but for just plain almonds, I'd say this is pretty good. The Oster didn't really produce what I would call a nut butter. It's, it's still a very grainy consistency and not really smooth at all. For $25, it was a valiant attempt. So my the tongue is stuck too. <laughs> the Vitamix nut butter has a consistency that I would hope for in a store-bought nut butter. It's smooth, creamy, and I can see myself spreading this on a piece of toast. <laughs> the Oster is more like a sand, I would say. It's rough, it wasn't chopped smoothly, I'd rather just eat the almonds. The Vitamix was able to get to this consistency because it has a high powered motor, a wide container, low profile blades that worked really well with the tamp. The high powered motor was able to deal with the density of the material. No matter how thick it got, it was still able to work through it until it got creamier and creamier. The Oster was able to crush the almonds, but nowhere near as well as the Vitamix. As the almonds turned into flour, the motor just wasn't powerful enough to keep up. Over time, the load on the motor will ultimately cause it to fail. And that's just much less likely to happen on the Vitamix. It's also interesting to note the designs of the blades. Both are considered multi-purpose blades that should be able to work with wet and dry ingredients. The Oster has blades that alternate going up and down. The Vitamix has blades that are more or less flat. For this test, it was important because I was able to put the tamp in without any fear of touching the blades. The upward facing blades on the Oster could be seen as beneficial because it'll have more vertical contact with the ingredients, but it makes working with any kind of tamp much more difficult. Overall, if you're gonna be making a lot of nut butters, the Vitamix is an obvious choice because it produces a good result. If you're looking for a smokier nut butter, maybe consider the Oster. While doing these tests as an engineer, there were a few things I couldn't help but notice. Pouring. The Vitamix spout is actually not that well designed. When pouring out smoothies, I found it harder to get to go to where I wanted. The Oster spout worked well. I was able to get the smoothie exactly where it needed to go. The Oster spout is curved and focuses the liquid towards the center. The Vitamix spout has got a squarish profile and the liquid could really pour out across this entire flat edge and it's just not that consistent. Loudness. You'd think that because the Vitamix was more powerful, it would have a louder motor, but that's not the case. Using a decibel meter, we can see that the Oster is actually louder. Oster is using technology that is decades old. On the other hand, Vitamix has patent technology that makes this powerful motor quieter than this one. Quality. The Vitamix is a high quality product made with state-of-the-art materials. The pitcher is made of Triton, which is a BPA-free plastic that's rigid, durable, super hard, and can go in the dishwasher. Overall, the whole thing is solid and designed to last. The Oster has a nice glass vessel, but the lid is a little bit flimsy and the base is not that sturdy. While the glass container is nice because it can be easily cleaned and doesn't stain, it's heavy and can shatter if dropped. Overall, depending on how you're gonna use them, either of these blenders might be right for you. If you have the money and care about quality, the Vitamix is the clear winner. But if you're more of a casual user, you can still get great results from this, as long as you use it responsibly.